Measles is back. Parents across Canada are worried, but especially those in Alberta and Ontario where cases are highest. Parents should be worried. Measles is aggressively contagious. A child is usually infectious before showing symptoms. There's also no medication to treat measles. The best parents can do is provide plenty of water, control the fever, and respond to any bacterial infections that pop up. Measles was officially eliminated in Canada in 1998, which means many parents today have no or little exposure to the virus. We reached out to Dr. Zaid Butt, a professor in the School of Public Health Sciences at the University of Waterloo, to get a handle on Measles 101. Welcome to the interview, Dr. Butt. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the invitation. The uh, parents have not had a lot of experience with measles for almost 30 years in Canada, but we're seeing an outbreak now. Um, so this is kind of measles 101. And what is measles exactly? Measles is a, a highly contagious disease or an infectious disease that uh, spreads uh, through an airborne spread. It can also um, uh, you know, spread through items or other things that are contaminated with with the virus or with uh, the fluid so uh, so uh, it's kind of like a disease that spreads from person to person just to just to say simply yeah so it can it first of all it's very aggressive is it not yes it's highly contagious uh, so just to give you a comparison between let's say the covid-19 as well as measles so a person who has measles can, on average, infect around 15 to 16 uh, people if they are susceptible to the disease. While COVID-19, at, at its most, it, it could infect uh, on, on average two or three people. So you can see how contagious it is. Uh, and the other thing that we need to uh, uh, know about measles is that you need a very high level of vaccination coverage to stop the transmission of the virus, which is 95% and above. Yeah, that that uh, caught my attention because I think the standard is usually around seventy-five to eighty-five percent, isn't it? Yeah, it's for so it depends. As I said, it depends on the uh, on as they say the reproduction number. So for diseases that that don't have that high reproduction numbers, you may not need that that level of coverage. But as a, as a, for most diseases, you would you would say yes, eighty-five to ninety. But for this particular disease, you need actually above ninety-five percent. Which, in terms of, uh, you could say, public health campaigns and other things and outreach, it's 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 a big number. Right. Let's talk about the complications because these this is the issue I think that parents are really worried about. If my kid gets measles, what are what could happen to it? I mean, for a lot of you know, majority, will it'll be it'll pass. It'll like uh, so. What are the symptoms? Let's start there. So uh, the symptoms, uh, you, it's kind of like most viral infections. You get fever, uh, you get runny nose, uh, you get, uh, you know, you could say red eyes. Uh, but then the, the, the thing about measles is there's a characteristic rash. It's a rash that starts from the face and basically goes down to the trunk and then goes to the limbs. So there's a characteristic rash that you see in, uh, in, in measles, uh, uh, and that's where you start thinking, okay, so that my child has started, like, uh, has been infected with measles. Now, there are some uh, uh, complications with measles. Yeah. It is not a disease that is innocent, and, and if you get it, you're guaranteed to that you won't have a complication. So one of them is uh, ear infections. Seven to nine percent of kids get uh, ear infections. What percentage are likely to get a permanent hearing loss? Well, uh, you know, I think it, it depends on uh, different conditions, like, for example, like how uh, how severe the infection is. Uh, whether you're able to treat that ear infection. If you pick it up earlier, you might be able to to treat it and the other thing is as you said it's seven to nine percent of not everyone gets the measles infection and similar with other uh, uh other complications like you know you could you could you could end up being blind you could have pneumonia uh, i don't have the exact number on on how many of these uh people who turn into like permanent blindness but 
in general, you, you, as you said, like it's around that percentage that would end up with having uh, some sort of, uh, you know, damage to the ears. Now, I also understand that encephalitis, swelling of the brain, is yeah. uh, is a common. And yeah. uh, the numbers that I was able to find is one to three deaths per 1,000. Is that 1,000 kids that get measles, you'll have one to three of them will get encephalitis? Yeah, so the risk of complications in the sense is, 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 is what you're saying. It's around, you could say if it's 1,000, so you'll get around like three people who might get that that complication but uh, i think the main uh, message here is you don't want to end up with these uh, complications even if the percentage is low because these are serious complications if you get that encephalitis it can it, it can cause basically disability later on so and uh, if you if for example if you're not able to treat it then it might end into death as well so I think the main message here is that we don't want people to get those complications. That's why we want to give them the vaccine before. So it's preventable. It's a preventable uh, disease. And with the measles uh, vaccinations, you get basically lifelong immunity. So, so I think that would be the message here. Yes. And why, I, I guess, coming out of the, the pandemic, we've seen there was a big pushback against vaccination. Now we're seeing, you know, the, the Minister of Health, uh, the Secretary of Health in the U.S. is a notorious uh, anti-vaxxer and is and we've got religious communities that don't that refuse to vac vaccinate their children. Um how do we, as from a public health policy point of view, how do we convince Canadians that we need to get back up to 95% plus uh, immunization against uh, measles? So the key is public health communication, like how how do you communicate with, with people? So I think one of the ways is you have to use all forms of media, whether it's uh, it's radio, whether it's TV, whether it's newspapers, and nowadays, it's social media is very important because you see a lot of misinformation on social media. And the issue with social media is that it spreads very fast. So if you if you put in like a post somewhere, let's say on X, it, it will reach millions of people like instantly. So I think the out I think the outreach should be there in terms of how do you address the concerns of people over social media? Is it passively, which I don't think is working? It has to be active, like active engagement on social media and other platforms so that if somebody has questions they get the answers instead of like you know you have to go through different websites and search so i think that's where the effort should be how do you how do you improve your public health communication and similarly it's also for like for communities that uh, that have like certain exemptions you need to talk with them you need to uh let them know the consequences of basically not having the vaccination um, and also like collectively how it can affect other uh, other communities as well. So I think there needs to be some outreach to these these communities as well, you know, trying to let them know about the about the vaccination. And and sometimes what we have seen is, is it's maybe it's not the exemption itself. It's basically people fear the vaccine. So they don't go ahead and, and get the vaccine for for themselves or for their children. During the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we did, I think, about 70 interviews around COVID, you know, talking to experts like yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, towards the end of it, as vaccines became available and there was a big push back against uh, vaccines, yeah. I talked to, I don't know, you know, number of doctors and, and specialists who explained how safe vaccines are but there is no 100% guarantee that there won't be a reaction. You might have, you know, whatever it might be. But the number of, of lives that are saved, the number of disabilities that are avoided and so on, so outweighs the, the few reactions that you get that, that that's the, the benefit. And, and maybe that's a point we need to, to stress to, to viewers is that this is not a 100% guarantee your child won't get affected or infected or affected, but it's pretty high and well worth the whatever tiny risk that comes with the vaccine. Is, have I got that more or less correct? Yeah, so uh, let me just uh, tell you about the vaccine. So 
sometimes some people might uh, experience the symptoms of measles but if you are vaccinated these you get a milder form of measles if you are infected and you don't actually get get the complications so huh. it's always good to have the measles vaccination and in terms of complications usually what we have seen is you as you see with other vaccines is sometimes you might develop some fever basically the main thing is soreness in your in your arm where where you in, in, inject vaccine and sometimes there's some nausea basically associated with so if you compare that with the with the complications and, and the potential for you to spread to other people that, that's really a, a big difference basically so so i think that's what people need to be aware of that it's always better to get vaccinated than to get the disease itself and i think that's the key message that uh, uh, you know uh, they need to understand the other thing about the vaccine is that this vaccine has been around for quite some time i think i believe in canada they started it in 1963 and you don't see you don't see those outbreaks why because people were getting the vaccine they were getting vaccinated you you had developed that sort of herd immunity in the population so that you didn't see the outbreaks and i think now what we are seeing is because you're there are a lot of people who are or children who are either unvaccinated or under vaccinated you are seeing these outbreaks because as we discussed before it's a highly contagious disease it's it's uh, it's difficult to stop it until unless you reach that level of vaccination one of the surprising things uh, uh in in this story is that the uh the covid-19 pandemic uh prevented some uh, parents from vaccinating their their children and uh, the sort of a covid-19 backlog of kids who haven't had it and maybe that's a message to parents uh, who might watch this that if your children fall into that group maybe now is the time to get them to the doctor and get them vaccinated as quickly as possible yeah so you're right like there was some backlog during the covid-19 pandemic because people were not able to take their children to the hospital or family doctors and get vaccinated and, and yes right now is the best time to get vaccinated i think there is no shortage of vaccine uh public health is basically having uh, giving the messages that we have the vaccines come and uh give us uh, we'll give you the vaccines and i think that's why they are also uh, you know having these suspensions for children school children who are not up to date to vaccine for vaccination because they want them to uh to take the vaccine so i i would suggest that this is the best time i think it it helps the children it also helps the community because you are basically helping in stopping the transmission Got a question about adults, uh, and the, this came up. Uh, but my wife and I, we were in talking mm -hmm. to our pharmacist, yeah. and we and we asked about this, and he said, "Well, do you have your vaccination records? Do you know if you received the vaccine?" Mm -hmm. And we didn't, and so no. uh, he said, "Don't worry about it." And he gave us the back. We had we were vaccinated in mm -hmm. in the uh, in the pharmacy office, and I, uh, w what would you recommend for adults who maybe aren't aren't like us, who weren't sure if they'd been vaccinated? Yeah, I would recommend go and get the uh, get the vac vaccination because there's no harm in getting the the measles vaccination even if you had it before. So uh, my recommendation would would be that you get the vaccine. I think from the uh, guidance that's provided by Health Canada, it's more like if you are uh, born before 1970, you should get uh, 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 get yourself a single dose of vaccine. For people who are born after 1970 they recommend like two doses of the of the measles vaccination and yeah. if an adult gets uh, a case of the measles uh, what are the complications if any so uh, you could uh, one is like obviously you have that have that rash usually it's uh, self limiting uh, you're okay but i the, the problem is like if you are if you're having some other comorbidities for example if you're immunocompromised then it might affect you uh, affect your systems and 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 all, obviously for uh, uh for uh, i think not basically for vaccination but for pregnant women if they get infected with measles then it can result in 
uh, you know, still births, it can result in like premature uh, delivery and low birth with babies. So I think that's important, like in terms of if, if you want to go, if you don't know about your vaccinations status, one is like find out whether you had it. If not, then go and get yourself vaccinated because obviously the benefits are more than uh, the right. cons. Dr. Bhatt, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.